from London, England. It's the Q covering Discover 2016 London. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillis. We're back to wrap. Paul Gillis and I are going to put a bow on Discover 2016. <laughs> We're here at the Dock Lens in London. If you've never been to Excel London, it's a huge facility. A um, number of conferences are here. Train station right there, of course, but giant docks and you know, huge uh, 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 moat, river, you know, whatever. It's, it's actually technically not the Thames. I don't think it's a tributary, but nonetheless, it's, uh, it's a pretty impressive place and somewhat remote uh, from, from yeah, London. Yeah, not a lot of distractions yeah. around here <laughs> right. from, from the conference. Yeah. The, a, lot, a lot of the action at night is in, uh, in London Center, but let's try to sort of summarize what we've learned this week. Uh, several things happening, so let's go back uh, to HPE's decision, or Hewlett Packard's decision, to split into two Fortune 50 companies. Uh, they, they've done that, and then HPE was perceived to be the growth company. I put growth in quotes, because you know, it's slow growth, uh, but it was the growth company, whereas uh, HP Inc. was the the cash flow company, largely from Inc., pun intended. Um, and so HPE, as that new entity, decided, okay, we got to clean up the balance sheet. It, it subsequently had made the acquisition of Aruba and it made another small acquisition of, of SGI, but it began to delever. Uh, it sold off its uh, Chinese operation. Now it's a joint venture. Um, it's announced that it's going to spin, spin in EDS into CSC and maintain a large proportion of the ownership, at least HP shareholders will. Uh, it's announced it's going to sell its large portions of its software group to Microfocus, a London, an England, a UK based company. Uh, and what's left is largely an infrastructure company, a pure play hardware player. Antonio Neri bristled at that mm -hmm. and said, no, no, we've got services as well. We asked the question several times to several people here, are you a services company, are you a product company? Uh, the answer is mixed. Services guys say, oh yeah, we're services-led. Product people will say we're product-led. Uh, the diplomatic answer is, well, we're both. We're, we're a technology, technology company. company. Um, interestingly, after years and years and years of asking this question of Joe Tucci and Howard Elias, who runs services at EMC, the answer was always, 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 we are a product company. And they sent that message uh, because they wanted to convey to their partners that they are product first, they have services, and by the way, a very successful services business, as does HPE, but they always positioned it as a product and technology company first. Personally, I see HP as a product and technology company, not as a services play. I see Accenture and Deloitte and Ernie Young and PwC as what I would consider real, and even IBM to a great extent, as services companies. I see HP as a product and technology company. What do you think? Uh, I, I agree with you, I mean, but I think part of that may be just our own perception because this is a legacy of, uh, the legacy of HP is they build great products. You know, they've been doing that for, for uh, 50 years. Right. Uh, they have, uh, first of all, I think it's kind of an academic discussion. I mean, the point is, if they're, if they're delivering something the customers want, then who cares how they define themselves? Here's why I don't think it's academic. When Lou Gerstner, and maybe I'm, um, I don't know, maybe it is academic, but when Lou Gerstner made the decision that we're going to go all in on services, uh, many of us made the contention that that is going to be the death knell of best of breed products at IBM, and I would argue that it, that it was. Other than the mainframe and the ThinkPad, you couldn't really come up with any products where IBM was a true leader. DB2 lost to Oracle. Uh, uh, the, the storage group lost to EMC. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are many, many, many important. examples. And so, my argument would be, if you declare that you are a product company, you know, you will be a leader. Now, having said that, that was when the industry was very fractured and structured and competition occurred on the lines of Intel and Cisco and Microsoft and, and, and apps, et cetera. And so, maybe with the world reintegrating and the cloud services and moving up stack and all that stuff, Maybe, it, maybe it's better to position as a service company, and maybe it doesn't matter. I mean, it certainly hasn't hurt IBM long term, uh, and so so perhaps it is a academic. But it's to me, it's something to watch. Question: Do you have to have best of breed products in you know for the next decade, or it is good enough 
good enough. Well, I mean, there was, there was most of the talk here was about products. We did have some people on theCUBE talking about services, but when you think of the themes that, in my perception, uh, dominated this show, it was composable infrastructure, it was IoT, it was uh, Aruba, um, it was, a, a, and then the subcurrent of this whole thing really kicked it off was, was the machine, this technology that can, may really upend this industry in a big way. So what I took away from, and frankly, I came into this conference pretty skeptical about HPE, thinking this is a company that's, they're managing their assets, it's a slow growth thing, it's, you know, it, it's just not much exciting going on there. I heard a lot of interesting technology coming out of this company. Now whether they are able to, uh, uh, to, to turn that into a coherent, vis uh, coherent vision that the customers understand, that the market responds to, of course, we, we won't know. But the feedback we had here today on theCUBE, talking to the bloggers, talking to the analysts, very positive. Uh, they got it. They came away with a clear message about what HP is doing on the technology front. Yeah, I think, um, again, back to my products versus services, I think HP has to be a best of breed products company because when you go all in on infrastructure, you better, better be investing in that and, and be able to defend that we have the best widget X product and we can, we can beat Dell because of this and we can beat Lenovo because of that. Give an example, and, I mean, and, I'm sorry we didn't get to Edgeline until the very end, but yeah. Edgeline, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. The idea of these, of these small, uh, uh, intelligent endpoint devices that have sensors, they have controls built in, sensors built in, that's, I've yeah. never seen anything quite like it. And so, you know, it's funny, I was talking to Peter Burris the other day, and he's like, look, the problem with this industry is everybody looks at things through a product prism. That's what we understand. We can, it's easy for us to make comparisons. I think his feeling is we should be focused more on the business impact. Well, I wouldn't disagree with that. That's kind of how people think. You know, they put things next to each other and try to do, do comparisons. And so, again, my point being, that to me, HPE is lining up against Dell as a major competitor to be an arms dealer to the cloud and the cloud, however you want to define the cloud, public cloud, private cloud, they're not going to sell a ton of stuff to Amazon and Google and, and Facebook and, 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 and maybe Microsoft, but, but yeah, generally speaking. It would be private cloud. I think it was clear yeah. it would be private cloud. It's not private cloud. It was, and, uh, Jeff V said, said as much, uh, right? He said, well the public cloud guys are just going to buy white boxes. Well right, and the zillion right, cloud. So now HPE and Dell both compete with the ODMs. ODMs are now up to 25% of the, 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 I think the units, so it's becoming a, a sizable uh, component, but I guess my, my argument would be, I know Dell EMC, they're a product focused company and they're going to go hard at their customers with, we got the best product because we look at all the features we have, they don't have this, we have that, and so I think HP rightly, when we talk to their product people, is saying, hey, we are different because we have fluid infrastructure, we have you know, this capability, we're developing technologies out of the machine, et cetera, et cetera, so I think it's an important part of the marketing message. Um, it's a much cleaner. I, I completely agree, by the way. I mean, when you yeah. look at who is successful in the computer industry, it's the companies with products, and that's what that's what companies sell: products. Uh, yeah. You don't make make you don't get rich selling solutions. And, and even what we're seeing from AWS, okay, their services, but their products, right? We got Kinesis for streaming, we got S3 for object, yeah, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. True. Yeah, and so, um, and but we're seeing a much cleaner, a much more streamlined uh, uh, Hewlett Packard enterprise. The decision to basically, get, well, long ago, get out of the public cloud, okay? That, to me that was a fateful decision in that it decided the future fate of HP as what I call an arms dealer for the cloud. They, they don't have a public cloud play other than to partner. So smart, let's make money partnering with Azure in particular. I mean, I see that as obviously their premier partner. Yeah, we could do Amazon, we could do Google, if that's what the customer wants. No one wants, wants to partner with Amazon. But, <laughs> right, right. I mean, yeah, Amazon, is a, like I say, it was, but it, it, to me, again, it's a one-way street into the cloud. The Azure strategy, I think, is a good one, and I think it's a winning one, and I think it will pressure a a Amazon. I think it's, that, that is an, uh, the, 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 the Achilles heel, really, of, of Amazon, and, and, uh, and I think there's sensitivity there. So, I like that strategy. Um, the, you know, moving the software business to, to micro focus, despite the fact that they're going to be a partner and they're still going to have you know, a large ownership, I don't think they're going to be reporting that income on the HPE income statement. I don't believe so. If, I don't believe so because it's, yeah, because HPE itself HPE doesn't own. HPE shareholders yeah. own 51%, but right, not so, HPE So itself. as a result, it's does not going to have a positive, you know, it's not going to be a tailwind for, for margins and operating profit. As a result of all this, HPE becomes a lower margin player. Like Dell and, and, and EMC, once you, you know, bring those two together and you cut those costs, which Dell is clearly doing. 
Uh, as, as a result, you've got a business model that has to make money at, I think, you know, EG last quarter was maybe 11% operating profit. Um, they f they f can they focus more on profit than growth? They didn't grow. So they have to balance profit and growth. The point is, and we've talked about this, AWS had 31, 32% operating profit last quarter. It's fluctuated between 25 and 30, 32 over the last year or so. This is the company that supposedly is the race to zero company. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's got you know, EMC, just for reference, before it went private, operating profits in the mid-teens, mm -hmm. maybe as high as 17%. So you're talking double the operating profit for the, to the company that is supposedly bombing the market. Now everybody points out, and I wanted to bring this up, we talked about it to the bloggers, the cost of, of private cloud is oftentimes cheaper than public cloud, the price, let's say, the TCO. But let's not confuse cost or price with cost. My argument has consistently been the low cost supplier is going to win, and usually does in this business, and Amazon, in my view, is the low cost supplier. I don't see how how companies like Dell and EMC and, uh, and Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and maybe even Lenovo for that matter, than China Inc., can compete on a cost basis with AWS because when you add in all the services and the deployment factors, um, Amazon, to me, is more efficient at volume. We'll see. Well, We'll see if they can well, take out the cost. They aren't trying. I mean, Google is the only one who is trying to compete on cost with Amazon. The other guys are all in flanking strategies. Well, no, I think They're Microsoft, all... from a cost standpoint, well, right? fair the, enough. the Azure Cloud is, hype, is true hyperscale. And look at this three true hyperscale you know, companies in the United States. You can maybe put Alibaba in there. Maybe there's a company, maybe, maybe there's a company in Japan as well. But, but really, it's those big three that have the volume. So my point is you either have to have, to be a public cloud player, so I'm not saying it was a mistake for HPE to get out of the public cloud, because you either have to have massive volume or you have to have upstack differentiation, like Oracle has, or like the SaaS players have. The SaaS players can very effectively compete against, uh, against Amazon. Yeah. And, and HP getting out of the public cloud business may have been uh, the happiest accident the company ever had. I mean, they, they certainly didn't set out to do that, but having, having made their decision to, to abandon it, they have they hatched this whole partnership um, uh, strategy, which is very interesting if they can pull it off. If they really can partner on an equal basis, you know, with all of these different companies, and they really can create all these win-wins. There's a lot of companies who don't want to do business with, with uh, systems vendors like Oracle or, or even IBM because they're afraid they're going to end up being, uh, being lunch. Well, and I will come back to that in the strategy of choice, and I think that's a winning strategy. It's just a lower margin strategy. I failed to mention IBM is another example of a company who's betting on analytics and Watson, and, and their cloud play is really their software. So, again, you've got to have that kind of differentiation. If you're HPE, if you're Dell EMC, you got to have low cost, you got to be able to replicate the public cloud wherever it's possible, you, you got to, you know, the tagline of make hybrid IT simple, it's a good North Star. Uh, hybrid IT ain't simple today. Um, first of all, it's, most organizations aren't doing the way we would define hybrid IT, seamless, you know, application and data movement between on-prem and public cloud, that's, that's non-trivial. And so, the partnership with Microsoft, which is a long-standing, over 20-year partnership with Microsoft, may turn out really to be their, their whole card there. I mean, those companies know each other intrinsically, they trust each other, and uh, you, Microsoft has, has uh, a vested interest in making private cloud successful, so does HPE. Yeah, and Microsoft obviously has a large estate there, but even the, the gentleman from Microsoft, I think admitted this is early days for us. I mean, the functionality of, oh, yeah. you know, we talked about same, same. You know, Oracle claims same, same, it's, you know, it's all there today, it's, it's all working perfectly. That's and we what know Oracle's that's, always done. We know that's <laughs> not true. Uh, but the strategy, to me, of Microsoft and, and Oracle is quite similar, uh, with the exception, it's, it's a lot, there are a lot of differences, there are a lot of similarities in terms of, we want the same on-prem versus public cloud sort of stack. The big difference is Microsoft is doing it with partners, Oracle is kind of building you know, right. its own proprietary stack. So this comes back to HPE, the new HPE must have a really robust partnering strategy, that's why it's putting so much emphasis on that. Um, and you know, it can get le leverage from partners, but it's got to get volume, and IOT is where it gets that volume. Right, so that is kind of the... the it's the a big question mark. And, yeah. and, and they're, they're certainly they're not the only company that's betting a lot on IOT. Cisco has, has big investments in IOT, <laughs> IOT as well. Um, 
as I said earlier, I, uh, I think edge line is a very interesting uh, uh, dimension of that that I, that I haven't seen, uh, seen elsewhere. Uh, and no one really knows how big that market is going to be. I, I, we hear about the economic disruption will be massive, but how much money is going to be in it for systems vendors? Yeah, so um, again, big picture strategy, HPE's board has decided, you know, we're going to go at, you know, focused on infrastructure. I don't know if there's a big move that it can make. Um, maybe. Who would you buy? Well, the rumor was they were going to buy Honeywell. Nutanix. That's too late. Uh, yeah, well, GE. That, I mean, well, but yeah, well, a merger with GE would be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, but you know, GE's becoming a trying to become a software company, right? So I'm not sure GE wants to be in the the, the low margin infrastructure business. The the I want to come back to one one thing. The the cloud piece, you know, and seeing Staccato and the OpenStack distro go to SUSE again, a cost cutting move the last remnants of HP Cloud. HP's Cloud Group was folded in. I was always, and Vertica is now going, I was always hopeful that when HPE bought Vertica that it was going to do an IBM-like analytics play on their cloud. And I think that could have been a winning strategy. I was excited about HPE trying to get its software act together. It never could find that formula. And I think that, you know, they just got worn down and internally said, you know what, we got we to gotta get rid of that business and we got to focus. So, in effect, I think it's the right call because slogging it out uh, was not working. I think it is the right so, call. I mean, they were not going to win that battle. And, and so many computer companies have gone down the drain fighting a battle that they couldn't possibly win. And give it, give it to credit to HP. I mean, HP, they have gotten rid, they've gotten out of businesses, profitable businesses, where they were never going to be number one. And it's tough to do that, but it requires discipline. Well, they could have run it as one big portfolio company and leveraged their supply chain. And that, that again, quite uninteresting. And I think I, I give HP's board credit because they're saying, okay, let's go for it as an infrastructure company and let's go after the third pillar of IoT and let's try to grow this thing. The other key move is Hewlett Packard Labs being integrated into uh, the enterprise group. That is a clear move, we heard it from Antonio Neri, to really try to get more productivity out of HP Labs to drive product through the pipeline into the marketplace. We haven't seen enough of that. You know, store once is sort of their example and their deduplication and their other examples, but, but not enough. Not enough productivity out of your R&D. Uh, I mean, as a result, acquisition's a much better use of cash than, than R&D. Well, so, I think the question around the machine I have is, they've obviously got some, some great technology here. Is this going to become a breakout? Uh, are they, are they gonna, is this going to break them out of the, out of the pack? Or is this going to become like IBM Power? You know, is it going to become this sort of uh, not very big, not very big revenue base, there's an ecosystem, but it's not really moving the market very much, uh, and that's going to be uh, up to their execution. Yeah, well, I think the strategy of you know trickling out bits and pieces of technology into their uh, their plat their portfolio that parts of their portfolio that they control is the right thing to do. I mean, frankly, I think the only thing to do, a big bang of a machine with a price on it, it's just, you know, never made much no, sense we, to, to we us. We saw some coverage this week speculating that this was a disappointment, that the announcement of, of uh, the machine was a disappointment. I, I just don't see it that way. I they agree. Were, it was a proof uh, of it's, concept, it's, and, it, and they will, this is technology that will be rolling out for years. No, I, I looked at it as this is a pragmatic way to get something to, to the market. Okay, it's and put it's, a stake in the ground. Yeah, and it's and it, it, it's not going to overnight, you know, change anything. But it, it could give HP some sustainable competitive advantages in the server business, which they've dominated for years. So server storage, the storage business, you know, we'll see. Well, it's interesting that they've now reorganized, you know, under the server uh, head, uh, a former server head, in Alan Andrioli. We'll see what that means for the storage divisions. Can they kill? Still continue to get more out of three par uh, on the networking side? To me, it's an Aruba. Play gives them a significant, uh, a significantly better story against Cisco than 3Com gave them, which was, hey, we got a nice second source to Cisco. Now they've got the whole wireless first approach, which I think is 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 quite solid. And of course, again, IoT. We talked a lot to, to a number of folks talking about IoT. Big unknown, big potential growth area. Um, I think it's about it. <laughs> Missing anything? <laughs> what more can you say? Um, so the new HPE. Um, focused, focused on infrastructure, smaller company. We'll see in the financials, we still, still expect good cash flow. Um, maybe not quite as good as you know, these other assets were profitable. Well, but but I, th uh, I think if Meg Whitman has, has proven anything, it's that she is a good financial manager. Right, I she agree. She runs a tight ship. 
Okay, we're here. It's warming up in London. It's at 46 degrees outside, and uh, and we're, that's a wrap. Let's go play Paul, tennis. Listen, pleasure working with you. Pleasure thanks with very you, much Dave. for uh, for hanging with us, and uh, thanks very much for the crew here. Really appreciate uh, all the awesome attention. Great production here. Thanks to HPE for having us at this uh, a great venue. Uh, Kristen Nicole and company, and the live bloggers, Bert. Appreciate all your help. We're going to pick it up. Uh, if you go to Silicon Angle TV, we got reInvent uh, going live. John Furrier and Stu Miniman and, and Jeff Frick and all the crew out there are going to be uh, covering uh, reInvent uh, today. Go to siliconangle.com. You'll see all the, the, the videos and the, the news of the day from this event and other events. Go to wikibon.com for all the research. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're out from HPE Discover London 2016. This is theCUBE.